How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. I'm on this great looking bog today. It's Friday, stopped working early to get outside. I spent the night here. It's actually the same place where I was last spring, but then I was with Fat Bike and I think my camp was somewhere over there, but now wind is coming from south, southeast. So I'm thinking that I'll get to tree line over there, looking towards the bog and set up camp there to be a bit more sheltered from the wind. Thanks for joining in. Let's have a great little winter adventure. I think that rock over there looks like pretty good wind block. It's definitely quite liberating skiing on a bog. Hard work, <laughs> but I've seen mostly just game trails around here, so I'm guessing I get to be all by myself. So this is the rock that I mentioned. Now I'm thinking that Instead of staying down here, maybe I should just find my way up there and set up camp there. Could be a nice view from up there. Sounds like a plan to me. One final push. All right, I made it up here. I'm looking around, I still have those trees to block the wind that is coming from that direction. And I had these two, three, three, bleh, these two trees here, which I'm probably going to use for my shelter. I don't have a Didi 3x3 tarp with me this time, but a bit smaller shelter, so I might be able to fit it in between. But first, I need to hydrate. Okay, so that took absolutely no time at all. I have that one piece of paracord running there over my seat, but I figured that I will build a new cooking area over here. In terms of the shelter itself, this is to go systems trifecta, has a reflective surface here underneath. I'm not going to have any open fire or anything, but still nice to have and also blends in quite nicely. In terms of the size, I do fit underneath just about. I can also sit up, good headroom. So just by eyeballing it in terms of the height, I think it came out pretty nicely. Next up, I will lay up my 
new sleeping pad. We'll see how it looks, if it's any different from the old one. And also my sleeping bags. Then it's time to make some lunch. Very late lunch. <laughs> All right, so there's the sleep system. My winter sleeping bag and a bivy bag. And this sleeping pad, I don't know, looks exactly like my old one. Except I think these texts were black in the old one. <laughs> so, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, old versus new expert sleeping pads, I will put a link up there or a card. But basically my old one broke on me, um, but luckily the expert warranty held. And I got a refund and I bought a new one, what I thought would be exactly the same, but the name had changed slightly and some specs also slightly, but should be more or less the same pad. At least by the looks of it, it is. As the first dish I'm making spicy noodle soup and actually I'm testing out this tactical fire pot and seeing if that truly works during the winter. So there's a bit of a flame visible there. Let's see how it goes. Well, my tests with the tactical fire pot didn't go super well. You can see all that in the video that I'm going to link up here once it's done. I decided to come under this tarp anyway, since I have a good good seat that lifts me up from the cold ground. And if this reflects back some heat, then I'm happy to have that one. I'm in the process of melting snow now to my first meal of the day, spicy noodle soup. All it needs is a bit of beef turkey to, well, beef it up. That should do it. Ooh. Mm. Oh yeah. We are maybe one hour away from sunset and this is my first meal of the day. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the main dish to come ready and rehydrate it, I think it's time to put a warm layer on. Although I really like this Ace Winter Combat shirt, especially when moving. This was again today very warm, excellent for carrying a backpack and moving during cold temperatures. It's still, you know, it's still not enough uh, when I'm stationary, just sitting here. I just checked and it's only minus eight, maybe minus nine degrees, so not super cold. But anyway, better to put an additional layer now that I'm still not chilled to the bone. This is of course Kelly Luppo Merino wool jacket that I've been using and testing as a part of my cooperation with Kelly for quite many months now. It's a simple product, but I've found it to be quite versatile. Oh yeah. I think there might be still enough juice for one batch. Let's see. I've placed again this lantern here, solar lantern, waiting it to get dark enough to light it up. Definitely. Although it is cloudy, immediately when the sun went behind those trees, I could begin to feel that 
temperatures are dropping at least a bit. But then again, if it stays cloudy like this, it won't get won't get down to I don't know down to minus 15 or 20 or anything like that. I think it's going to hover very close to minus 10 tonight. Funnily enough, it was minus 20. Two minus 23 a couple of days ago in the morning and looking at the forecast it's supposed to be plus one uh, this Sunday so now it's Friday evening so in just two days mm. but strange week in terms of weather and also next week looks fairly warm around here as well so I figured that this is time when I need to get out and stay outside, out in the woods for the night. Testing now the new old sleeping pad and see if it's still the same. And anyway, there can never be enough of these winter trips, I think. And then uh, I still have a bit of a hmm. Curious dessert, I would say. Winter survival food. Honey. I have honey quite often, but rarely in this format. Mm. I think I'm going to put some into my cup and maybe a bit of hot water on top to get a honey tea going on. Cheers. This is life. All right. I guess it's time to go this night. This lantern really gives quite a bit of light, considering that it's a solar powered lantern, so it's not that bright, but in this snowy environment with this reflecting tarp, it seems to work. Now I will just fold up this shirt and put it here to get a pillow for myself, like so. Seems about perfect. This Luppo jacket I will keep close by. Either right here or tuck it in the bivy bag. Just in case it does get cold during the night. I highly doubt it, but you never know. It's easier to pull it out of the bivy bag than this dry bag during the night. So doesn't hurt to be prepared. All right, I think that's everything. I'm ready to go to bed. I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning. Looks like we've received a bit of a fresh snowfall last night. And like I said in my previous winter camping video, it always snows when I'm out winter camping, regardless of the forecast. Every night always snows. Mm. Yes, there has definitely been some build-up, but the tarp held up nicely. Nicely, no problem, and Bibi, of course, did its job. Get my sleeping bag dry. Still does snow a bit. Not a lot. Very light snow. I think it might be a bit 
warmer day today than it was yesterday. Which isn't necessarily a good thing when it comes to skiing, but it is what it is. Now, the first thing and the best way to improve my current situation is to make some coffee. So I packed up my sleeping bags, still leaving the Vivi bag and sleeping pad out here. It's time to try to find my <laughs> cookware from here. Ah yes, the most important piece of it all, coffee pot. And yeah, I'm aware that my rucksack wasn't under the tarp, but it's a very limited space and I'm a tall guy, so I needed pretty much all of it, but it doesn't matter. It's, you know, if your rucksack can handle a bit of snow accumulation, then I suggest you get a better rucksack. So while the coffee is getting ready, I figure it's a good time to talk a bit about my skis. So these are made by Kuusisto. They're snow line apparently. I don't know what kind of other lines they would have besides snow. Neverwax 680. And as you probably can tell, they are not modern cross-country skis. These are in fact my grandpa's, which I then sort of inherited. For anyone who's gone at least through the Finnish Defense Forces conscript service, this type of binding system is very familiar to those. So these attach to certain type of rubber boots and actually the boots I'm wearing are also from my grandpa and these are Finnish Defense Forces surplus boots and actually if I'm not mistaken a couple of years older than myself. These are a bit wider than modern skis and of course my favorite part is the fact that as it says here, never wax. So I don't have to fiddle around any type of waxes or anything. I guess you could still do something to these, but I've chosen not to because they work just fine enough for me. They're still faster than walking, faster than snowshoes, so that's good enough. And they do have a bit of flotation properties as well because they are a tad wider. I don't know the if the length of these skis is good enough or suitable for my height or any other properties, but I'm not that big of a ski snob yet that I would really care. So very basic, very sturdy, you know, full metal bindings. A plane is flying somewhere over there. That's uh, something that I haven't heard for a long time. So if there's something positive out of this current plague situation that is going around the world is that there hasn't been a lot of planes and being outdoors has been a lot more enjoyable because of that. But only thing that I'm a bit concerned is that how long these bindings will last on me and if there is in fact a place where I could get a replacement if these get broken. I haven't checked that out, but we'll see. And I've been also thinking a bit about getting those fancy OAC sliding snowshoes, especially the shortest model, because I think the longer ones are too close to this type of skis that I don't really um, see a point in getting a pair of those. But the more I think about that purchase, the less I'm sort of interested about it <laughs> after all, because those costs I don't know, 350 euros or something. I'm sure they are really good, but I haven't had a chance to test those out. And um, I figured the amount of skiing I do outdoors, uh, I, I already have these, so why not use these? I thought that I would want to have those short and wide skis to be able to better go in deep woods, but I came through some pretty thick bush yesterday and I didn't have any issues. This provided enough flotation on that snow and, and uh, I managed to maneuver with this just fine. 
Of course I had a rucksack on and didn't drag Akio behind me, so maybe that changes something. Maybe not, but anyway. If there's one thing that I need to consider getting is some type of overpants. Because with this setup there's always the possibility that if I brush off some branches or something, the snow falls inside my rubber boots. And that's of course not optimal. So some type of pants that would go over my pants and over these boots would be then maybe on the shopping list. But I'll leave it that for the next winter season. So, Kuusisto, never wax, 680. Pretty old school, some would say, compared to a lot of the gear that I use, but I haven't never considered old stuff to be bad or worse than the modern gear. In fact, I started my outdoor hobby, uh, at least this current one, with pretty much only using military surplus gear. And I still have some and actively use, but I've been just kind of upgrading to lighter materials and things like that, more modern innovations, Molly and Pals compatible things and so forth. But every now and then they've done something so good that there is absolutely no need to upgrade it. Such is the case with these keys. So Kusisto never wax. Oh, yes. Let's have a taste, shall we? Another night spent in the woods and another great morning coffee. Cheers. Let's see how things look underneath. Hmm, bit of a heat loss. Definitely more visible from this back side of the pad. It's wet and started to freeze a bit. So as said before, although the name is Sunmat HL Winter, still I would recommend bringing another, maybe like a summer, sleeping pad, something lightweight and easy to carry and bring that, place it first and then this one on top. Not just for the warmth, but to keep this pad also then dry. Good thing is that this is Synmat, so synthetic insulation, which I do prefer over down for certain products, such as sleeping pads, because, again, it's difficult to dry down, but wet synthetic insulation is not that big of a deal. The best way to get all the air out of your sleeping pad. Very relaxing as well. One, two, three. All right, I think I'm about ready. Now just one layer off. And also what's really important at this point is to remember to open up these Pit tips. It's better to do this now before I get sweaty. You should feel a bit chilled 
bit cold. That's how you know that you've dressed properly for the activities you're about to embark on. These Varusteleka wool liner gloves are very nice, but don't last that long. All right, one final thing before heading out. I want to, of course, fire up my GPS and then get some sort of bearing. I'm taking a different route out this time or different route from yesterday. Let's see. How long does it take for the Garmin to wake up this time? I'm seriously amazed that this is the best thing that hikers and such have access to. It's bulky, heavy, extremely slow. In fact, everything about this reminds me of the old Nokia phones from like 20 years ago. And it's full of features that no one ever uses. I just want to have a device that shows me map, tracks my location and my routes, and that's it. Maybe that's too much to ask from a GPS unit. I want to start to get going roughly to northwest, not quite, so maybe 340 degrees. Then I will just pick some kind of a landmark. Maybe those trees over there. And that's my rough bearing for now. Okay, a hood would be nice in this weather, but I'll manage. Getting closer to the edge of the forest now. Has been relatively easy going actually. These keys really, really help a lot. This would have been quite a bit slower on snowshoes. You can see a lot of game trail, game trails here as well. I guess my eyes are not playing tricks on me after all. I think I have found trail that I was looking for. At least there's a clear path now going through these woods, so easy to follow. But anyway, thanks for joining me on this winter camping and skiing trip. Do check out the videos here on the left. There's more of the same goodness over there. You've been watching Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. I'll see you all in the next one.